These horses have their own private racetracks where they train. And when they pass on, they own graveyard. A horse cemetery. Who'd have thought it? Just the droves of people who come here from all over the country every year to see it. I know one horse has a guest book with more than two million names in it. You know any human celebrities can top that? I wonder if Connie was one of them. Ah, you and your Connie. Come on. That checks our thing and stone it. Maybe Red will know. I beg your pardon? <laughs> I must have been thinking out loud. Something Red Corpuscle might know. Red Corpuscle? He was our tail gunner. Red-headed. His real name's Corpuscle, so of course everybody calls him Red Corpuscle. Oh. He lives in Revere Mills near Boston. Oh. And is that where you're going? Yes, I... What's that? Oh, that's the entrance to the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Haven't you ever been over it? No. Oh, it's wonderful. I tell you? It's a dream highway. 160 miles without a stoplight. Crossroads go either over or under. There's one overhead now. How do they get on it? Just at the end? There are nine or ten side entrances. They call them interchanges. We're coming to one of them now. Oh, a clover leaf. Cars can enter or leave without interrupting the traffic. I can't get over how level it is. Even in rough country. What are we going to do when we hit the real mountains? Oh, you'll see any minute now. We tunnel right through. Right. This is a dream, by the way. My father works for the Highway Commission, and he tells me that there are going to be a lot of these express highways around the country soon. This one follows the old shortcut between the Atlantic and the Ohio River. First an Indian path, and then a peddler's trail. Only instead of winding up and over the mountains, we just tunnel straight through. Miles and miles of them. I wouldn't have missed this for a good deal. And I'm glad I sat beside you. Thank you, kind sir, she said. Now I've got something to tell Red. He's just crazy about tunnels. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. They told me I might find my friend Coppercell up here. Red! Wiley! <laughs> for big sake! Welcome to Revere Mills. I was just coming down to meet you. Shucks, the clock must be late. What the... You know, for a minute I thought you were the mayor. I am the mayor, and don't laugh. What? Go ahead, knock yourself out. All I know is when I came home, they made me the mayor, and I'm trying to give them a good deal. And you will, Red. Uh, I mean, Your Honor. The get-up I found in the closet. I put them on for you for a gang. Come on, I'll show you the municipality. Uh, the what? Okay, then, the town. Remember the arguments we used to have? Bill Colville for California, Chick for Florida, and of course, Tex was all for Texas. Don't forget Minnesota. Land of lakes. You and your lakes. A little mini soda water. There's a real pond. Those waves are coming in from 3,000 miles away, over where we were. It's like I kept telling you guys. Everything started here. Remember what I showed you today? We're all part of New England. Plymouth Rock, where our forefathers landed. Faneuil Hall, where the Boston Tea Party was planned. And Boston Harbor, where it was pulled off. Paul Revere's home. The Old North Church, and the very steeple where the signal lanterns were hung. Lexington Village Green, where Paul Revere rode and the farmers gathered and stopped the red coast of the bridge over Concord River. Where you saw the Minuteman statue. No wonder they called the land the Pilgrim's Pride, and we're proud of today more than ever. You know what I was homesick for most while I was overseas? That. Boston Common, where the colonists used to pasture their cows, duck their witches, and hang their pirates. And the young men took their girls for a walk. Looks to me like they still do it. Yeah. This is one place a fleet is permanently in. <laughs> Say, speaking of girls, do you know where Connie Albright is now? I believe she's stopping in Williamsburg. Virginia? Yeah. To restore a whole town is no small job. 
Rockefellers have given millions of dollars to rebuilding hundreds of buildings from cottages to state house on the old foundation. We've seen the Bruton Parish Church, the oldest church in America where services have been held continually. You can sit in George Washington's own pew, or Thomas Jefferson's, or John Adams. You've seen the governor's palace in formal gardens. This was the center of the social life of Virginia for 70 years, up to the revolution. Yonder's the old jail, with the pillory alongside. They're putting a fellow and girl in. <laughs> Yes, they have a lot of fun with that sometimes, but there was a time they fastened people in there for all day for minor crimes, like kissing your wife on Sunday. <laughs> Although I don't see why that was a crime. Do you, Miss Albright? No, except for some of the whiskers the men wore in those days. I'd say it was a crime any time. <laughs> so where are you going from here? Williamsburg on the next bus. Williamsburg? Yes. I like restored colonials, too. Oh, sure. I hope she's still there. I'm sorry, I won't be here, Miss Lucy. I'm leaving within a day or two for a trip through the Smokies, then on to Jacksonville. Thirty minutes for lunch. catch that bus? Oh, I don't know, mister. That's the southbound bus through the Great Smoky. Oh. The other section will be coming along in a few minutes. It might catch up with him somewhere down the line. I'll get my badge, huh? Yes, sir. The second section is loaded with a bunch of high school students today. I think they can squeeze you in. Thanks. Remember, you're looking at some of the oldest mountains in the world. Older than the Alps, or the Andes, or even our own Rockies. There are also more different kinds of trees and plants here than any other spot in the world. There are still great sections of it no white man has ever seen. On the other hand, there are white people living back among those hills who have never been out of them. They talk pure English, but you might have a hard time understanding some of them. It's almost the English of Chaucer's time. They grind their own grain in century-old water mills. They spin their own thread and weave their own cloth. A direct descendant of Daniel Boone lived down here. Daniel Boone VII. He has a forge shop. He hammers out things. These people tinker and contrive all sorts of things for sale. We're coming to a place where they sell such things. We're going to stop so you'll all have a chance to look around. We're coming to the P.D. River. This is the river that Stephen Foster wrote the song about. Only later he changed the name to Swanee. There really is a Swanee River, isn't there, Miss Twitchell? Yes, dear, farther south. But this is the one he was writing about. 
Way down upon the P.D. River tried to phone you to find out if she was here. No, she sure didn't come down here, Wiley. In Jacksonville, they thought a girl of her description was... No, she telephoned to say hello. She was going on down to Memphis next to see her married sister. You know her name? No, I don't. But say, check our navigator who works from out of Memphis. She'll look him up. Well, I was going to see Chick anyway. Well, she'll stay there a while. Now that you're here in Florida, you want to see the place. Well, I... Not just a tourist spot, like the Boxing Tower and Bird Sanctuary at Lake Wales. Named for Wales in England? Well, it's spelled that way now, but it originally was a whaling ground, W-A-I-L, or lake rather, where the Indians gathered to whale in time of trouble. Oh, I see. That's not the half, of course. I want to show you my Seminoles. I'm deputy Indian agent down here now. No. <laughs> how? No, that's not how. That's why I want you to see them. These Aboriginal Americans are a mysterious people, primitive but proud. The name Seminole means wanderer, and they don't aim to own anything they can't pack up and move on a minute's notice. They live off the land, or perhaps I should say off the water, because fish is an important part of their diet. And you never guess how they catch them. They spear them. They live along the streams hidden in the Everglades. You can come upon a village of their fragile huts one day, and maybe by the next day they are completely gone, bag and baggage. A month later, they may have suddenly reappear for a brand new bunch of them. I have to go into the back country tomorrow, and I'll take you along. Thanks, Bill. I'd like to. Maybe some other time. I found my way down here, but just now I... I know, kid. Just now you've got them Memphis blues. Of course, Beale Street isn't all of Memphis any more than the Bowery is all of New York. Why, you've never seen anything more modern than downtown Memphis. Or more restful than Forest Park, named for General Nathan Forrest. He's the man that said the way to win a war is to get the fastest with the mostest. All right, all right. I like your town. I'll even like General Forrest. But I want to know about Connie. Where is she? That's what I'm telling you. We took her around that night, and the next day, my wife and I were going down to New Orleans, and Connie went along. Have you ever been there? No, but I want to know. Oh, you don't want to miss New Orleans. It's like walking through one of their old wrought iron gates into another world. A city that was more than 100 years old before it became part of the United States. The old square is still there, only now it's called Jackson Square, in honor of Pandy Jackson, the hero of New Orleans. And there still stands one of the oldest churches in America, the St. Louis Cathedral. You'll feel as though you've gone to sleep and woke up in the middle of the 18th century. In the park in front of the church is where the cassette girls, the shipload of French girls, landed in 1730, so the pioneer settlers could pick themselves wide. The Cabildo, French Capitol building. Now it's a fascinating museum. And the Napoleon House, the house that was prepared for him in the New World, but he never got to come. There's Pirate's Alley, where Jean Lafitte used to hide out. Oh, romance so thick you could grab it by the hands full. OK, it's romantic. But where's Connie? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't exactly know. What? Well, she didn't come back with us. She was heading for California, although she did talk of stopping off to see Tex on the way. Here you are, 
Come, Miss Connie. Awesome. Will he come this way? Sure. That little old Maverick, Curly will ground him. He's good, isn't he? Curly? Oh, he's all right. It's Poncho. Poncho? He's the smart one. Why, he's got to know more than the cows, even. <laughs> I don't imagine that very much. Don't you fool yourself, ma'am. You'd be surprised how much us humans can learn from those critters. If you ever get lost, look for a cow trail. It's the shortest way out of a canyon or the best way over a mountain. You see, the greatest danger of getting lost in this country is thirst. Find a cow trail. It's a sure way to water. Well, they can tell if it's rained miles away and light a shuck straight for it. They can tell hours ahead when a bad wester's blowing up and hightail it for broken country where there's breaks for protection. I had no idea. Yes, and cows have a language all their own and a way to make each other savvy. When their calves are too young to travel, one cow will stay with three or four calves while the mothers go to water. When they come back, the other one will go. I like your cows, Tex. You'd love Texas. I've got a nice little spread of my own, enough to get married. I wonder, are they this nice in Minnesota? What? The cows. Oh, you're thinking of Wisconsin. What I'm thinking of is in Minnesota. I don't get it. Los Angeles city limits. What does that mean, driver? It means they're great boosters. There's no place like L.A. Of course, the tourists head straight for Hollywood. Yonder is Grauman's Chinese Theater, where many of the movie premieres are held. And the stars leave their footprints in the cement. This is the Radio City section of Hollywood. You can get free tickets to see and hear the stars broadcast. Uh, this is NBC on the left. A couple of blocks further is CBS. Across the street is the Earl Carroll Theater Restaurant, claiming to have the most beautiful girls in the world. And it could be. There's the Wilshire Brown Derby. You'll want to eat in one of those spots before you leave Hollywood. But I was sure she was coming here to Santa Monica. What? Whereabouts in San Francisco? Here. <laughs> I look up and I say, it is the Sergeant Wally Pruitt, no? It's the civilian Wally Pruitt, yes. And you, you were that so hot fighter pilot from Brazil. I remember your whole name. Now, don't stop me. Jose, Raimundo, Vicente, Luis, Gaiosa. <laughs> Luis de Sousa, Gaiosa. I always forget the Sousa. <laughs> Won't you sit down and join me? Say. What are you doing in San Francisco? Well, the commission for my government, which I have almost finished. And you, amigo? A little mission of my own that I haven't caught up with yet. So, oh. Well, it is, what you say, a good place for it. I love the view from the top of the mark, the bay and the Bastille. What do you call Alcatraz? The magnificent bridges, Twin Peaks and Telegraph Hill. Over that way is the university campus with its so beautiful campanile. Down there is the Opera House, where the Peace Conference was held. Everything is so romantic here, from the old missions to the colorful Chinatown. I met a Chinese businessman. He tell me Confucius say... I don't care what Confucius say. Can he help me find my girl? <laughs> my poor old friend. on time, too. Every 65 minutes. What makes geysers? Well, the center of the Earth is a core of intense heat. In an old volcanic region like this, holes let the water seep down into it. Part of it turns to steam and blows the rest of the water out of the hole, which then gradually fills up again. Hot water plays many strange tricks around here, like these colored hot springs. Mud volcanoes. Paint pots. Hot streams, 
coal coming together all over the place. One place are the hot springs right in the middle of a coal lake. Well, the place is fantastic. That's what I meant when I said you could take away the geysers and the hot springs. All 3,000 of them, and Yellowstone would still be an amazing place. By like Connie, we have everything here. The biggest mountain lake in the country. A Grand Canyon, all our own. Of Yellowstone. That's where the place gets its name. There's a waterfall three times higher than Niagara. We have our own petrified force. This is the perfect place to study the history of the Earth. Geologists have found that 12 different forests have grown here, one on top of the other. One on top of another? Yes, you see, the first forest grew, then a volcano covered it with volcanic ash. Then another started and grew on top of it, and so on for at least 12 complete forests. Why, that must have taken millions of years. It took a long time. There are thousands of acres of forests out there that have never been touched by an axe. A wildlife preserve and bird sanctuary. It's also a fisherman's paradise, and it doesn't take a license. Wait till my dad hears that. This is a great place for riding and hiking trips. Why, uh, why don't you let me take you on one tomorrow? Oh, I'm sorry. My vacation's up. I've got to get back to the hospital in Salt Lake. That means leaving tomorrow. Well, at least you'll be here for our regular campfire tonight. Oh, yes. Well. Do you always have this much fun here, Ed? Well, it's a lot more fun when you're here, Connie. Thanks, Skipper. Is part of your duties, too? Connie, you knew how I felt about you even in France, and you never gave one of us a tumble. No. Or did you? Ever hear from Wiley Pruitt? A radio gunner? Don't tell me. Maybe I've already told you too much. Now, why couldn't I have been the one who was shot up in that last mission? But he's a grand guy, Connie, and if there's anything that I can ever do... Thanks. My problem, Mr. Anthony, is how, with maidenly reserve, I can get that lug from Minnesota to Salt Lake City. Next bus to Yellowstone? Three hours. Three hours, huh? Mm -hmm. Give you a chance to see our city. Mormon Temple, Seagull Monument, and other interesting spots. When's the next bus east? You don't go east, you go to Yellowstone, you go north. I know. Maybe I've made a fool of myself long enough. I beg your pardon? When's the next bus to Sauk Center, Minnesota? Sauk Center? Oh, yes, that goes through Omaha. The next route of here to Omaha is uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Thanks. I'll plow around and think it over. Where is that monument? Seagull? Just across the street in Temple Square. Years ago, we had a plague of grasshoppers. Right at their worst, the birds came in and ate them up. So the monument was erected to the seagulls that save Salt Lake City. Heads I look for her once more, tails I go home. That does it. Sauk Center, here I come. Oh, what happened? I don't know what I did. Somebody get a doctor. Let me through, please. I'm a nurse. Why, Lee? She knows him. Good. Somebody ought to take care of him. You heard what the man said. Dog, I'll bet you did this on purpose. What are you doing here? Looking for you. All the way from Minnesota? Yeah, by way of Boston, Florida, and California. Takes a long way around, don't you? Well, it's supposed to be the shortest way home, isn't it? I guess maybe it is, yeah.
trip, leave your car at home and your troubles behind. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. People across America, from New York to L.A., Next trip, leave your car at home and your troubles behind. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. People across America, from New York to L.A., Next trip, leave your car at home and your troubles behind. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. People across America, from New York to L.A. America, here we come. Leaving their cars at home. 